On this vote, the yeas are 52, the nays are 48. The nomination of Amy Coney Barrett of Indiana to be an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States is confirmed. Republicans have cemented their conservative majority with Amy Coney Barrett's confirmation to the Supreme Court on Monday. The institution has evolved over the years. It was designed to uphold the Constitution and keep the President and Congress in check. But critics say it is turning into a political tool. We take a look at what issues are at stake and what it means for the country. We could lose 50 years of precedent around civil rights and equal rights in this country that we've been fighting for, everything from the Voting Rights Act to the ACA, which gives health insurance to 21 million people in this country, and they could lose it. There are going to be a series of cases, most likely this term, that are going to deal with climate change. And this is an administration that already has tried to and successfully chip away most of our advancements that we've made around climate. Also, there are 17 cases in the pipeline around reproductive health. We know that part of the strategy around a conservative court is to try to reverse Roe versus Wade. That's the landmark ruling liberals are most worried about. For nearly half a century, it has given women the right to abortion, but it could now be overturned. In fact, the Supreme Court has reversed almost 300 of its own decisions since its inception. Should the court go that far, I think that there would actually be revolt. I think that we are seeing now a population that is tired of oppression. We're seeing that with the racial justice uprisings. I think we'd see something very similar around Roe. You know, Roe is an, an old precedent. It's got a lot of history. There are justices who, you know, respect that history. So I don't expect any radical change. I think the court's approach to the legal issues that underlie Roe has been careful and incremental, and I would expect that to continue. But Roe has been challenged several times, and Barrett's mentor, Justice Antonin Scalia, was in favor of overturning it. The, the closest thing to a, uh, an opportunity, I guess, to overturn Roe v. Wade was Planned Parenthood v. Casey. Regardless of whether you think prohibiting abortion is good or whether you think prohibiting abortion is bad, regardless of how you come out on that, mm. my only point is the Constitution does not say anything about it. So my father's point wasn't that um, abortion should be banned nationally. My father's point was that the Constitution is silent on that, meaning it's, uh, it's left in the hands of the states to, to make those decisions. Scalia was on the opposite end of the ideological spectrum from Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who fought for women's rights. Despite their politics, at the end of the day, they were good friends. It's likely that if that collegiality is gone, that the court will, will suffer. I, I don't know that it necessarily means that opinions will suddenly be shoddy or anything like that. But I think that one of the reasons Americans trust the Supreme Court uh, and the judicial branch generally more than the other branches of government is because they, they sense that collegiality. I am a lawyer who believes in the courts and believes in the history of the court, of how it has protected and advanced rights for oppressed people. I do think now it's very hard to ignore that the court is becoming a political body.